taking risk away kills any opportunity. Now, of course, there is the balance, how we find the balance. I have here three poems. I will read you because uh, they were written by much smarter people than me and I can cross the message. So one is the author unknown I found on, on the web uh, some uh, year ago, but I, I read it uh, to, to our people. That's about courage to overcome risk and fear. And this is what we need as entrepreneurs. So I will read it to you. To laugh is to risk appearing the fool. To weep is to risk appearing sentimental. To reach out to others is to risk involvement. To expose feelings is to risk expo exposing your true self. To place your ideas, your dreams before a crowd is to risk their loss. To laugh is to risk not being laughed in return. To live is to risk dying. To hope is to risk despair. To try is to risk failure. But risks must be taken because the greatest hazard in life is to do nothing. The person who risks nothing, does nothing, has nothing, and is nothing. They may avoid suffering and sorrow, but they cannot learn, feel, change, grow, laugh, and live. Chained by their attitudes, they are a slave. They are forfeited their freedom. Only the person who risks can be free. Um, so. I hope that I made a point here. So I will go to, to the risk mitigators. There are many risk mitigators, but uh, one is really creativity. We are all creative people. This is how we were born. We just need to make sure that our creativity and the creativity of the people who connect to us doesn't have the constraints that it could be nourished. Uh, you, can, uh, you can get space for your own creativity and the people around you. With that, you might ask, is there an opportunity for an entrepreneur today? Because you have so many companies, so many smart people, so many smart concepts, smart products. Uh, the markets are flooded with services, with goods. Um, is there a space? And uh, I think that, uh, fortunately, there will always be space because people get first lazy, and then they also change their focus. They change their focus. Look, uh, if. Uh, people were able to keep um, their wealth and their smartness and uh, how they go, go around. Um, we would have here elite uh, of the emperors, Roman emperors or Chinese emperors or whatever, right? But that isn't the case because no one over generations can really keep going for too long. That isn't that uh, the next generation is necessarily a generation of losers, but they might be focused on totally different area of, of human enterprise or interest or instead of business in art or what, what, whatever. So this is what giving us the opportunity, but we need to be, to be searching for the opportunity. Um, just uh, uh, in a few bullets, um, what I find as a good prerequisites uh, for a risk mitigation and for the entrepreneurship. Obviously, positive thinking and optimism and being self-motivated. Trusting in people, building and keeping relationships. Okay, relationships like here, relationships are enormously important because no matter what we do, unless really you have that fantastic, uh, bright, uh, bright idea, setting a completely new product and other people really get it into motion and you, you develop that idea uh, in isolation. What's also happening, but very, very rare, most of the businesses and all of the entrepreneurs, they are dealing with other people. It's their customers, employees, their, their friends, partners, right? So relationship is, is very important and needs uh, to be invested uh, into. You need to keep control. Okay, control um, doesn't sound right, right? You know, because you can have the bossy control, the ugly control, or you can have gentle control, but control is needed. Um, then you need to learn how to let go. When the control is established and you are confident that everything is moving, you need to know when to, when to pull back, but uh, thinking about how to go around con control is important. Going into conflict. Entrepreneurs simply dare to go into conflicts. Uh, we don't like conflicts, no one does, right? But sometimes it isn't conflict we see with other people, but conflicts about ideas, about what needs to be done, about priorities. Um, unfortunately, there are conflicts there and we need to go through. Uh, we need to take, take the challenge. Maybe you heard that all of the people on the planet are connected by six 
six nodes or you know six other people that we are all interconnected as all that uh, seven billion people um, always uh, with the maximum of uh, through six other people now that theory uh, well known had been um, uh, studied a little bit more and it had been uh, discovered uh, and it makes actually perfect sense that that doesn't mean that every person has the equal number of connections there are some you know, when, when, when you see it mathematically, there are some super nodes. So every person is a node, and there are some super nodes who have simply many more connections than our, our uh, other people. So the entrepreneurs and other people who have the entrepreneurial spirit and who can build relationships, they simply are those super nodes. The super nodes are very important for the world to get better, to take the true risks like wars away, because people would be closer to each other through those super nodes. So see yourself as being uh, one such a uh, super node. Okay, some Canadian values treating all people nice and treating, uh, treating all people equal. Um, also, a thing which people don't like to hear that much or think that much, but on the other side, there are also negative people who can keep you, keep you back and keep you down. And uh, uh, they might not be bad people, but they are people loaded with negative energy. Um, if you want to build something, uh, focus on the other type of people, is the positive energy. So uh, these people, you need somehow to, um, to um, uh, get out of, uh, of, of your way, of your process. One um, motto which is my life motto on which uh, I built or co-built with my two partners, um, Adastra Group, is, is this. Stone, the builders rejected, became the cornerstone. You might perhaps know, know, know that uh, sentence. It's uh, tremendous wisdom. What it means that people or also things which uh, didn't seem to other people as being of any value or for any opportunity, they might have been that overlooked opportunity. When you focus on people, how many times some people are dismissed or rejected as not being good. It happened in my life several times, really. You know, my, my, my school teacher at the high school called my mother and said, this fellow is no good to anything. I can send him to some trade because he cannot go to the university. He cannot be nothing, right? So uh, the damage could be done to kids and damage could be done to adult people, but uh, everyone might be a hidden treasure and triggered rightly. So be the triggers in other people. Look for the opportunities in, in them and look for the opportunities in you, yourself. Don't let other people to intimidate you. But the same is about any business opportunities. When someone says, there is no opportunity here. In the field of information management, the one subset was called ETL, extra transformational load, the data integration. The big consulting companies, they didn't want to do it because that wasn't fancy. That was really coding in the back offices, uh, back IT offices, nothing what you would go and present to the executives and talk about as, as data modeling or, or architecting or bus business processes or business solutions. All these fancy things, uh, things were already covered. Um, not quite well because we cover it better today, but uh, this one, data integration, the ETL field was neglected. So I decided that that's the area for us. This is where we want to be excellent. This is what we will take um, as our core competency. And that was uh, one part of, uh, of our success. And then it's always good to be humble because uh, humble doesn't, uh, doesn't mean to be subdued to others, but it means to be open for the possibility that you are wrong or that you don't know everything yet completely perfectly. People who are humble can learn. People who are not humble, they are arrogant, and who are arrogant, they are also ignorant. They cannot learn because they already know everything, right? So they cannot get any, anywhere. Um, so be humble is a really good thing. And then um, two last things. Manage whatever you have to manage with gentle heart. It doesn't mean that you wouldn't be firm. Uh, you need to be firm, but with gentle heart. You know, combine brain and heart and uh, leave legacy. There was a great book written. Uh, you have seen it maybe 10 years ago on, on the bookshelves. They are selling it still today, I am sure. Die broke. Die broke as the financial planning for Canadians, right? Die broke. Don't leave any legacy. Don't leave anything to your kids. Spend all, all your money, what you make. What a devastating concept that was. 
What a disastrous concept. No, no, no. Leave legacy. Leave legacy. Not only in money, but in value, in what you start, in the good messages, the help to others, whatever it will be. Leave your legacy. You know, because the truly successful people, they don't think for their lifetime, they think generations long, right? So this is any business who is just thinking, now I do it for a couple of years, I cash out. They might succeed here and there. Sick business, because they are leaving someone to suffer. You know, these are the bubbles. And definitely, our philosophy at Adastra, we are not building bubbles. We are here building a legacy. So, I am, I am almost there. I want to say a few words about Canada, because we are in Canada and we are Canadians, and our company had been started in Canada. This is, and of course, and we as Canadians like to hear something nice and positive about Canada, right? Um, so of course, uh, it's a no-brainer. Canada is a great place to do business, especially Toronto is uh, perhaps the greatest place to do business, because we have the whole world here. We can learn from the, from the variety of people, backgrounds, talents, also the, the people who built Canada are immigrants with that spirit and also no other choice. We have to make it because if we don't make it, make it or break it, right? So um, there is that, that extra energy which exists and pulses in the city. And we also leverage it in our company through the talented people we hire here, Canadians. This is how we got to the different countries where we operate today. And I named the offices, but of course our customers are many more in many more countries than where we have offices. These are only offices where we have full-blown you know, marketing, sales, finance, uh, all, the, all the development services, etc. Et, et but um, we operate, I think, in something around 30 countries around, around the globe. And that's very much through the help of the people uh, we have and many of them uh, who are our employees uh, here, here in, in Toronto. Now, of course, I think that uh, also that uh, founding principles of this country of people who are free is phenomenal. Now, I also want to hope that this will continue because uh, that doesn't mean that the people who come and join us, as I joined uh, with my family in the 1991 year, um, de develop too quickly some sense of entitlement. Uh, because in business, there is nothing like a sense of entitlement. That's uh, the great thing is to get opportunity. And the fantastic thing is that we as Canadians welcome all people around. And I can tell one small story to that. When uh, we were here the first days in Canada and we went with, with our four-year-old son to the park first time and some lady met us there and we barely understood what she was saying, but she asked where you are from, that typical Canadian question, right? And, you know, we were thinking, oh my God, you know, we, are, we say that we are from the, the former communist countries from Eastern Europe and uh, she will say what you are doing here, or, you know, so we were learned from uh, Western Europe, where we used to live, right, a couple of years, that this is an no-go. Um, yet when, when, when we truthfully said from, from the Czech Republic, she said, oh, that's great, that's great. I put my wife aside and I was telling her, um, this lady is crazy. Like, let's, <laughs> you know, she doesn't know what she's like, girl, let's, let's move, let's move. But in the, in the next days, that story repeated, repeated itself. But uh, the fact that uh, Canadians uh, are such nice people and uh, that almost doesn't have precedence in any of the countries, no matter how great around the globe, um, that should be simply taken as opportunity and uh, not uh, as sense of entitlement, I think. And uh, if it continues that way, then Canada will be still continuing to be great, great country to do business in.